morning. Uh, it's good to have you with us again. Uh, we are on page 73 of our prayer books. To him who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might forever and ever. Ephesians 1 verses 3 to 6. Let us give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for he has blessed us in our union with Christ by giving us every spiritual gift in the heavenly world. Before the world was made, God had already chosen us to be his in Christ, so that we should be holy and without fault before him. Because of his love, God had already decided that through Jesus Christ, he would bring us to himself as sons. This was his pleasure and his purpose. Let us praise God for his glorious grace, for the, gift, the free gift he gave us in his dear Son. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Psalm for today, Psalm 89, verses 19 to 25. Of old you spoke in a vision to your godly one and said, I have granted help to one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him, so that my hand shall be established with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him, the wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and my steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to continue by reading Ephesians 2 verses 19 to 22, and that'll be our New Testament reading for today. Ephesians 2 verses 19 to 22. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, let's pray. Lord God, who wonderfully created us and even more wonderfully restored our humanity, Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit to triumph over suffering and death and grant us eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, today we're thinking about how there is one apostolic church. Yesterday we thought about the diversity and universality of Christ's church. Well, the apostolic nature of the church is about the exclusivity of the church. There is only one church and that is Jesus's church that was handed down to his appointed apostles and then on to us. Now, this is much more of an ideological statement than a genealogical one. Uh, let me explain what I mean. Uh, to think about this genealogically is to say that Jesus handed his authority to a person or persons who handed this authority on to others and another and another like a, a genealogy. So the bishop or the head of a church um, today is the holder of apostolic authority over the church. But Protestants think about this apostolic succession ideologically, not genealogically. The church is apostolic in that it follows the doctrine, the teaching as handed down from the apostles and therefore from Christ himself. The focus is not the apostles, the people being sent out, but the message with which they were sent. The authority of the scriptures which the apostles wrote and compiled is handed down from Christ himself and handed on to us. So to be an apostolic church means simply to be a scriptural church. The one church of Christ is exclusively the people who believe and trust the scriptures as the true apostolic witness of the gospel 
of Jesus, about Jesus, and handed down by Jesus. Anytime we move away from this, either by picking and choosing what we include or exclude from the authoritative word of God, like liberalism does, or by trusting the authority and power of the church in a person who holds a position genealogically handed down, like the Roman church does, then we end up taking our eyes off the true head of the church, off Jesus himself. If we take our eyes off him, we take our eyes off the gospel and we no longer have any assurance of our salvation. When it boils down to it, this is really the reason that the Protestant Reformation happened in the first place. The reformers realised that the Roman church was no longer apostolic at the time, in that it no longer trusted the authority of Christ in his word, but had perverted it. And so the whole Reformation movement wasn't to create a new church. No, it was to return the church back to the apostolic witness. We believe in one apostolic church. Every person, parish or denomination that trusts that Jesus is the head of the church and in the sole authority of his word, handed down to his apostles, handed on to us, is his one apostolic church. Anything that denies, obscures or perverts this is not Christ's church. We're going to recite the creed together. Uh, you can find that on page 117. It'll also come up on the screen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, will you continue in prayer with me? Lord, have mercy on us. Christ. Have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We praise you, Lord of all, for the gifts of Christ, our ascended King, for apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. Hear our prayer for all who do not know your love and have not heard the gospel of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Send out your light and truth through the messengers of your world, word, both lay and ordained, and bring many to saving trust in Jesus Christ. Help us to support them by our prayers and offerings, and to commend the gospel ourselves by what we say and do. 
Hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for our nation. God of the nations, we pray for Australia. Inspire and direct our leaders to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Bring many Australians to a knowledge of the truth about Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for us all. Amen. Go before us, Lord, in all of our doings, with your most gracious favour, and further us by your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, you'll notice on page 78, there's a whole bunch of other things that you could be praying for and, and spend some time in prayer uh, about after this video uh, is, is finished. Uh, we do hope that you're going well, uh, particularly as uh, restrictions are, are slowly being lifted. Uh, as we've been saying, uh, please do give us a call at the parish office if there's anything that we can do to help uh, with life or what, whatever's going on for you at the moment. Uh, but in the meantime, the Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace equip us with everything good so that we may do his will. And may he work in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Well, have a great day today.